Hey, it is your buddy, Peace and Harmony, with you here today. Much love going out to all the beautiful, empowered harmonizers. We are zooming in and focusing in a little bit more in depth on a great viewer question, and that is to discuss sort of the narcissist discontent, their feeling of inadequacy, or really the feeling that um, they are after the best and only deserve to hang around and be associated with the best people, uh, the best organizations, the best individuals, that then they sort of exude this area, um, sort of aura of grandiosity or entitlement. Um, it's kind of like the big hat, no cattle syndrome. In other words, they're walking in like they have a herd of 400 cattle and they're a asking for a farm loan and they really are just you know chewing on a blade of grass and they don't really have all that but they want to be treated as if and oftentimes this leads to those type of individuals um, being becoming pathological liars meaning lie just to get away with things um, lie to um, you know prop up their ego um, yeah I've got a record deal. Uh, there is no record deal. Yeah, I own a company. Yeah, there is no company. Um, yeah, I'm I'm just dating you. They're dating four other people. Um, yeah, the, uh, the dog ate my homework. Uh, they didn't do the homework. Um, I, you know, and then there becomes this, you know, eventually disparaging gulf between who they talk themselves up to be and then who they really are. And this really creates a feeling of uh, discord and cognitive dissonance in people who then are obliged and obligated to become part of the big hat, no cattle, basically syndrome or supply source and sort of becoming agreeable to the narcissist to prevent a narcissistic t tantrum outbreak, sort of that narcissist rage. You don't give them you know, their spoonful of sugar and then they just freak out. Um, they become very immature. They become very hostile, rage-like, um, just oftentimes to a degree of a situation that does not warrant the reaction. Um, you know, they, um, they got a parking ticket for $5 and, you know, they can't stop, you know, they're angry about it for two weeks. I mean, they're just off the charts, you know, they're going on Yelp, they're, I mean, you know, they're just, you know, out of, really oftentimes they're rageous because it's an insult to their ego with which they want to be treated. Oh, why can't you just get rid of the ticket? I am, you know, blah, 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 blah. I mean, they have this entitlement and then sort of uh, treat others as if you must treat them as if they are these things which they are not. So people then experience a cognitive dissonance or developing a sort of a shell or inauthentic self while in a relationship with a narcissist. So to me, energetically, it becomes really understood as sort of like through osmosis, meaning that you become that with which you surround yourself by. So if you're surrounding yourself with unhappiness, you're going to become unhappy. You know, if you surround yourself, um, in the corner, you know, life is going to become very small. I mean, so if you then surround yourself with these narcissist individuals who live a, a, a charade, a sham, a, uh, a mask, a ego, um, a big hat, no cattle, then you have to become sort of amenable to that energetically to be on the same wavelength. So you have to develop then an alter ego to meet their alter ego, if you if you understand. So then there becomes a real disparaging between a public and private self. Um, you know, what you are in public versus in, in private. And then if these grow um, very differently or in large other directions, you know, then you begin to have feeling that you're not living an authentic life. You can't go on anymore. This is not sustainable. Our relationship is falling apart. You know, so people get married under these pretenses. They take jobs under these pretense. Um, they, uh, they have families under this pretense of being the big hat, no cattle. Um, and so, you know, and then others have to sort of play the, the game. And 
oftentimes you don't want to play a game. You know, it's too gamey. There's too many mind games, too many, um, you know, um, needs to, you know, that you are in, you know, you, they, they mistake then sort of this sort of dis, discontent as the way to live. So it uh, oftentimes keeps people doing a lot of things, keeps them buying things, keeps them um, eating things. It keeps them going places, you know, so it, it, it's a fine line between sort of fulfilling an authentic, you know, content, have a, a content itself, which is based on having humility, humbleness, um, knowing that there's more to life than you. There's a big picture, um, that it's not all about you. You're not the center of the world. You're not the center of the universe that, you know, you can congratulate others and not feel threatened. Um, that you can, um, you know, be around all types of people and not feel degraded or offended. Um, you know, um, I mean, so, or, you know, feel that you have to, you can ex exploit others or mistreat others. So, you know, the narcissist will oftentimes, you know, not have that humility or humbleness that leads to content, that leads to happiness. So, if you're constantly in, in, a, in a, a poverty consciousness that you don't have enough, then you're going to oftentimes, you're, what you focus on will grow. So if you only focus on what you don't have, you'll be missing what you do have. So it's just like, and then your, your cup will be overflowing and you don't know it. Um, or you don't have gratitude for the overflowing cup. You, you, you're not able to sort of really get the full, you know, um, worth of it because people then always think, oh, it's replaceable or I have, you know, people are replaceable. Um, I will just buy another one. Um, you know, just sort of this discontent leaves this feeling that you are not good enough. You are not then whole in their presence. So it becomes a real experiential, um, and sort of, I would say evidential, uh, part of the journey in a relationship with a narcissist is that they just always seem to be discontented. <laughs> they seem to always be just a little bit unhappy. Um, always a little bit, you know, um, looking for something better, somebody better, a better situation, a better restaurant, a better uh, party, um, a better movie. Uh, you know, in other words, it just, if, if it doesn't meet their entitlement, oftentimes, which betrays and belays what they are, um, it, you know, you are not good enough. And so it doesn't mean you have to hang around people who don't like you. You, you don't, but you also don't have to give and give and give to people who don't like you in order to sort of be an accessory to them or to, you know, be used by them for whatever it is that they needed for their ends. And, um, you know, uh, it's very sickening. Um, we watched the Netflix with the, um, what's his name? Jeffrey Epstein. I mean, it's just sick, but you know, you just have to understand that there are, um, continuing continuums in psychology or spectrums. Um, and the degree um, to which, you know, people need help, um, you know, or, you know, are, you know, it, it becomes a real exasperating, uh, topic, especially if you've been hurt by others or you've, you've been betrayed by others. Um, and there's sort of this discontent has then plagued your life where you then feel discontent. You don't like who you are. You don't like what you have. You don't feel that you're enough. Yeah you know, it's too late for you. Um, all these different ultimatums that are founded out of poverty consciousness, you know, um, you're sort of planting negative seeds in the wrong garden, you know, and, and so it's not really the most hospitable, you know, you have to have like an emotional green thumb. You have to say, wow, you know, my seeds of content are, and, and that I am enough and that it's sort of, that can be sustainable. You know, I think that um, in his book, Letting Go, um, Dr. Hawkins also talks about this sort of as a, a crisis moment, which I think probably a lot of people are stumbling upon in this pandemic right now. You know, people's lives have been, you know, placed on a screeching halt. You know, you're no longer going to the same restaurants, the same um, bars, the same movies, the same comedy places, the same... Um, 
uh, churches. You're no longer going to the same jobs, the same people. I mean, all this you've had like slamming on the brakes. And so it's a, it creates, I would feel probably, um, a lot of crisis for people. Um, and so a, a crisis of a reset, you know, magnitude and whether this is, is meant to be, I mean, you know, there are no accidents. I'm sorry, my hay fever. Um, so to me, it's kind of like, well, maybe this is sort of a, a reset that is, has a positive outcome. In other words, you know, start over, stop overusing, have more gratitude, become a little bit more mindful and conscientious of, you know, how you're living your life. And so you can take stock of what you have because the other way of life, you didn't really take stock of it. You didn't really see it. You took it for granted. This can always be replaced. I can always get another. And so it leads to this discontent and sort of lack of humility. And so then people learn now, wow, you know, um, wow, I couldn't get that salsa at the store anymore. And, you know, I better really appreciate the salsa that I have now because I can't just pop, get in, pop in and get another one of these. It's these sort of experiences just sort of on the everyday, but that you, you can then develop and understand how maybe seeds of discontent were bred within you. A low self-esteem was nurtured or, you know, planted or nurtured within you that allow, you know, created this sort of extremist thinking or that you needed to overcompensate or outdo or overdo to the point where maybe that isn't required anymore. Um, you know, so, or maybe it is, it's up to you, but do you see what I'm saying? How you can navigate it and reset it, get it back under your control. So life doesn't feel like it's just, everything is out of control, negative. Um, I'm going through fits of depression, you know, may, instead of fits of depression, this can be fits of gratitude, fits of humility, fits of patience, uh, fits of virtue, fits of learning about, um, world history, fits of, uh, learning about books on tape, um, fits of learning, um, you know, whatever sort of interest that you want to pursue. So it opens up new pockets oftentimes that are required to develop intrapersonal skills. It's kind of like internal jarring, uh, not jarring, but it, this might feel jarring, but it's just like back in the day when, you know, your grandmother would learn how to, or maybe you still do learn how to can learn how to, um, put them in mason jars, learn how to jar and save, you know, different harvest of fruit or food so that you'd be able to be sustainable. You know, you would have your own food economy, you know, and, and so it becomes like an emotional economy. You have to make sure that you're in the positive, that you're not bottoming out, that you're, you know, not just falling splat all the time, you know, and then unhappy, um, feeling discontented. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not measuring up to the Joneses. I mean, all those reevaluate what, you know, this is to you. Um, and realize that the discontent is oftentimes fostered by the seeds of insecurity inadequacy um, of a narcissist that doesn't have just sort of that empathy for others. And so they need to make up for it and compensate in other ways. Uh, you know, and they're in, they're, they have the right to be this way. I mean, uh, we're not trying to say that they can't do that, but just to the point where it does not create an environment of negativity for you that you have to exist in or live in or carry on through your days, this sort of negative internal environment that has been fostered or developed by, you know, hurtful ways of being treated, um, you know, and then, uh, you know, being um, again and again and again, so that you, you know, sort of rehearsed and rememorized this negative into your life. So you have to sort of, you know, really get out of that funk and realize, stop rehearsing and rememorizing the funk. I mean, just allow yourself to be, even in the neutral, is a positive. And then seeing that you can create a bridge from that of, of humility, gratitude, humbleness. You know, you can foster these different emotional states. And also I call them em emotements where you can literally schedule in, you know, schedule in 10 minutes of joy, schedule in 10 minutes of humility, schedule in 10 minutes of gratitude, schedule in 10 minutes of 
being in awe or the sublime. You know, schedule in, you know, rather than scheduling in hours of depression, hours of apathy, hours of fatigue, you know, why can't you schedule in, you know, these little bits and then build up endurance. If you need, you know, to go to a doctor, if you have like a chemical imbalance, then you might need to st talk to your, your doctor, you know, take a you know, uh, health appointment and just say, you know, I'm, I'm struggling with this. You, you might have um, a chemical imbalance as a result of this. You're, the way that the electricity in your brain is then wired and fired, you might need some assistance. There's no shame. You know, um, you go to your doctor and say, I need help. You know, um, could this possibly help? Your just primary doctor, and it, it doesn't have to be a big deal. I'm not advocating this, but what I'm suggesting is oftentimes people suffer in these sort of desert, like emotional desert-like mm -hmm. and suffer. I mean, emotional stresses, emotional pains that become ongoing physical pains, illnesses, somato, som semantic illnesses, you know, um, illnesses that have no answer. I mean, you know, the doctors don't always know everything. They don't know everything. I mean, they can't, you know, so you, you need to sort of be able to think outside of the box, you know, and then give some authority to yourself, you know, um, as I once said, you know, sometimes doctors tell you what you want to hear. Um, and I said this to, you know, uh, someone and maybe they were offended by this. And it's not that it's meant to be made harshly, but you have to be the captain of your soul is the message. You know, you have to be the captain of your wellness, especially that internal state, despite what's going on with the body. You know, does the body need to be strengthened? Do the emotions need to be strengthened? You know, does your happiness need to be tended to? You know, does your anger need to be flushed out? Have you, what have you been bottling up? You know, what do you truly need that you are in denial of? Oh, I really do need joy. Oh, I really do need companionship. Oh, I really do need intimacy. You know, you might've written these things off and you wrote them off maybe years ago, decades ago. Wow, I really do need joy. It is, you know, so do you see what I'm saying? Bring your happiness full circle. This is your buddy, peace and harmony with you here today. And I hope that these videos do help. Please share, please subscribe, and for goodness sake, please donate for more great tools, videos, discussion, and support. Peace in. Peace is without. Peace be with you, and have a beautiful day.